The Protestant theologian Paul Tillich once said that faith is the most misunderstood word in the religious vocabulary. And I'm uh, increasingly convinced that he was right about that. And my uh, justification for that is my experience with these YouTube videos. Because, as you know, people can comment on these videos. And I must say, every day, I hear somebody say to me that faith is credulity, naivete, accepting something on the basis of no evidence, it's pre-scientific nonsense, it's the way uh, children would think, etc. Faith is being continually um, bad mouth. And on the basis of that characterization, people will draw these sharp distinctions between faith, so construed, and modern science. Modern science is rational, it's empirically based, it's self-critical, it's self-correcting, etc. And people draw the conclusion, isn't it great that the Western mind finally wriggled free of the terrible constraints of faith and moved into the clear, well-lighted space of reason? And they go on, isn't it tragic that uh, the modern mind is still haunted by this specter from another age, faith, which is hindering and holding back the modern mind. Okay, as I say, almost every day, I hear that kind of characterization about what faith means. Um, I just heard a couple days ago that Pope Benedict XVI has announced that next year, beginning next fall, we will have a year of faith in the Catholic Church. So I thought, okay, here's my opportunity to make some clarifications about what serious people mean by faith and what they don't mean by faith. Here's an analogy, which I think is, is illuminating. When you're coming to know someone, let's say there's a person that kind of fascinates you, you know, and you might watch that person for a while. Maybe you see uh, what she wears, how she comports herself, how she relates to other people. Maybe you check with mutual friends and find out certain things about her. Maybe today, of course, you would Google her name and you could find out a lot about probably where she's from, where she's educated, where she works, etc. right? You could find out a lot simply by using your reason, looking at things objectively and making uh, deductions and conclusions. You could come to a good deal of knowledge about that person. Okay, but let's say you really want to get to know this person. Eventually, you have to meet her, right? Now, when you meet her, um, maybe when you're up close, some of what you've discovered will be verified, you know, by your own rational analysis. But eventually, something kind of wonderful and extraordinary is going to happen. Namely, that person is going to speak. Now, when she speaks, some of what she says probably will be in line with what you already knew. It'll simply confirm what you've already understood. But, but, the more you get to know that person, the more that person begins to open her heart to you, the more intimately you come to know her, what's going to happen? She will reveal things about herself that you would never know in any other way. Not just where she's from and where she went to school. That's data that you can learn through a Google search. Not just um, anything you would pick up from watching her behave. She will disclose to you truths about herself that exist within her own interiority, in her own heart, and can only come forth through her free decision to speak. Now, at that point, and I hope you're catching that this is true of your relation to any person, right? At that point, you've got to make a decision. The decision is, well, do I believe her or not? I don't know. I can't verify these things objectively. I can't do a Google search and find out if they're true. I have to decide, yeah, I believe this person. I have come to trust her in such a way that I now accept her speech as true. Now, I think this is a very apt and illuminating analogy for what serious Catholics, I'll speak for my tradition, mean by faith. We want to come to know God. Can we determine a lot about God on the basis of reason? Yeah, sure we can. Look at the beauty and order and contingency of the world. Look at some of my videos on those things. Um, I can conclude that God exists, that God is perfect, 
that God is good, that God has intelligence and will and freedom, that God is the governor and providential, um, is, has providential care over the universe. I can determine all those things on the basis of reason alone. If you doubt me, take a look at the first part of the great Summa Theologiae of Thomas Aquinas. Thomas Aquinas is a bit like the Sherlock Holmes of theology. What I mean is, think of how we would ordinarily look at someone and we come to certain conclusions. Sherlock Holmes saw with such uh, um, insight that he could come to all kinds of correct conclusions simply on the basis of examination. Before the person ever spoke, Sherlock Holmes could determine a lot about them, right? So Thomas Aquinas is the Sherlock Holmes of theology. He can determine all kinds of things about God on the basis of reason alone. Is this good? Yes. The Catholic tradition says authentic faith never involves a sacrificium intellectus, Latin for a sacrifice of the intellect. In fact, one of the signs that you're not dealing with authentic faith is that you've had to sacrifice your mind. See, now I would characterize that as a fundamentalism or a fideism, to use the technical term. In the Catholic tradition, we say, if you are sacrificing your intellect in any way, you're not dealing with authentic faith. Just as you don't sacrifice what you learn through your Google search, what you determine through your own investigation, you don't leave that behind. But, but, one of the deepest truths about God is that God is a person, right? God is paradigmatically a person. He's the ground of all personhood. He's the supreme person. Therefore, if you really want to know God, what do you have to do? You have to wait for this free person to speak, right? I can get to know someone, you know, to some degree, but I will never really know that person until she speaks, at which point I've got to make that decision. Do I believe her or not? Do I trust her or not? So with God. The claim of the Bible is that God has not remained utterly hidden, has not remained utterly in the shadows, but that God, by his own freedom and choice, has determined to speak. He thereby reveals things to us that we can never know simply on objective analytical grounds. I'm not denigrating in any way what we can know on those grounds, but we can't know the heart of God until God decides to speak. At which point I have to say, okay, do I trust him or not? What's faith? Faith for us is that moment of trust. When I say yes, I accept the truth of the God who speaks. And see, my point is, there's no other way, finally, to know and relate to a person other than faith. And that's true in our human relationships as well. If you were to say, in regard to another person, I will only go on what I can absolutely know through analytical reason. How much of that person will you ever know? Very little. How much of that person will you ever be able to love? Very little, see? Because you're in utter control of the process of knowing that person. In fact, you have effectively objectified the person. You've made that person an object of your investigation. Now, a fortiori in regard to God, right? God who is the supreme person. Over and over again on these inner, on the inner tubes, on these YouTube uh, 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 pieces, people will say something like, you know, unless I can absolutely prove it, unless you can show me with pure analytical reason. And I want to say, come on, I'll show you a lot through analytical reason. I'll give you arguments for God's existence and so on. Fine, fine. But you see how you've locked yourself in to this little narrow space. I will only accept what I can absolutely control. Well, heck, you'll never know a person on those terms. If God is a person, he invites faith. Doesn't mean naivete, credulity, accepting superstitious nonsense. You know, I'm driving it. Just as another person, finally, invites you to have faith. How come you married that man or that woman, right? 
Oh, it's because I had absolutely analytical control over every... Come on. At some point, there was an, a mutual act of trust. Call it faith or an exchange of hearts, right? So with God. Faith is the act of saying, Lord, I accept, I trust what you've revealed to me in your own freedom. You know? And that's why faith is not opposed to reason, though it goes beyond it. Just as that trust in another person is not irrational, but it does go beyond reason. So in regard to God, we have finally to have faith precisely because we're dealing with the supreme person.